What is going on everybody? I am back today to talk about a movie that is relatively older, actually going on 20 years old at this point. And it is a movie that when I was growing up was probably one of the most important movies in the world to me as an awkward teenage kid who didn't feel like I fit in in any sort of circumstance. Like, I remember being introduced to this movie. I rented it from Blockbuster, like, as soon as it came out. And I watched it the first time, and I immediately had to go purchase it. And I think I watched this movie probably 50 times as a kid. And I could just re- I could recite virtually every line of dialogue in this movie word for word. And at 14 years old, I wasn't super perceptive to the filmmaking world. I wasn't really thinking about, you know, the- the- what went into the filmmaking of this this movie, but more of just the fact that it was kind of unique and offbeat in a way that I was impressed by. And throughout the years, I've gone back and revisited it multiple times. And I think I've taken away something new from it every time I've seen it. But at this point, it had been about six years since I've watched it. And I wanted to go back in and see it and kind of view it with fresh eyes and with this, this film analytical head, see if it was gonna still hit me the same way as it did when I was a teenager. And the movie I'm gonna be discussing with you today is Napoleon Dynamite. Napoleon Dynamite is directed by Jared Hess. A listless and alienated teenager decides to help his new friend win the class presidency in their small western high school while he must deal with his bizarre family life back home. So, as I said, I loved this movie growing up. I thought it was super hilarious. I quoted it all the time. And I've watched it over the years and really enjoyed it. But with my film analytical mind going in and watching it, I was curious as to how I would perceive it now going on almost 34 years old. And I still adore this movie, I might even love it more than I did when I was a kid. And I think there's something really respectable about this film. Not only does it have consistent, iconic lines of dialogue that are just so easy to repeat and absolutely hilarious, but there's a lot of intentionality in the filmmaking and in seeming mistakes in the filmmaking that come across as really hilarious. And it's hard not to think that Jared Hess did some of those things in intentionally to add to the offbeat comedic elements of the movie and I'm excited to talk about it with you today. So at the beginning of the film we're introduced to Napoleon Dynamite played by John Heater. We see him get on a bus and throw an action figure out the window on some like fishing line and just like carry it on his way to school and we see his day-to-day -day interactions. He's bullied. People don't seem to really like him all that much but Pedro Sanchez moves to town played by Efren Ramirez and the two of them very quickly hit it off and they are both very uh, weird and uncomfortable in the best way possible. And the two of them form this friendship. And the entire film is we see Napoleon at home with his uncle Rico and Kip and his brother Kip and we see him interact with kids at the school. And the, the premise of the film is the school election for Pedro, but there's a lot going on surrounding that. And there's all these little subplots in the town, and it's really just experiencing the life of Napoleon Dynamite. So as I said, I absolutely adore this movie. I think it is incredibly funny. At the time that it came out, Hot Topic and all these companies put out shirts with every line of dialogue. And I feel like people that did not see it initially probably got really burnt out on the marketing of it because there were just a lot, just merchandise with lines of dialogue everywhere. And if you were unfamiliar with the movie, you were just completely bombarded with merchandise surrounding it. But watching it all these years later, it truly is hilarious. Hilarious. It's just really offbeat and strange, but in a way that I feel like a lot of people like myself who grew up in, an, in very small towns and went to high school in very small towns have seen people that act like this and seen people who talk this way. And it doesn't feel all that much out of the realm of normal, even though it does feel offbeat and weird in the way that the dialogue is delivered. And I think what makes this movie work so well is the fantastic performances from top to bottom. I don't think I would recast a single person in this movie. The fact that some of the people that go to the high school look like they're 30 just really kind of adds to the charm of the movie and just the goofy 
nature of it. I think John Heater as Napoleon Dynamite is just such an iconic role, not only in his vocal delivery, but just in like his facial expressions, the way he walks, the way that he runs. Same with Efren Ramirez as Pedro. He is just such a memorable character that is that is fantastic and he fits the movie really well. Aaron Rurell, who plays Kip Dynamite. Kip is probably one of my favorite characters in the entire movie. His whole plot arc is so uniquely weird and hysterical with his online chat rooms and then his girlfriend comes from Michigan to visit him and kind of starts shifting his whole personality and it is just absolutely hysterical and weird the way that it plays out and I find myself just laughing hysterically more and more at every line of dialogue that he delivers and I really want to talk a little bit about the filmmaking element in this the cinematography the, the camera is normally relatively static where it's placed but I think it's really interesting how much intentionality there is is in the framing of certain shots in this movie there it's really an incredible attention to detail that is impressive for a movie that had like a four hundred thousand dollar budget like there's a you can really tell that jared hess had a lot of time and energy that he put into this movie to create something that is withstanding the test of time people still love this movie all these years later and it shows in the craftsmanship of the filmmaking i talked a little bit about some of the editing choices that feel kind of funny the, the one that really comes to mind is early in the film napoleon calls home because he wants to go back to the house and kip answers the phone and you get the shot reverse shot of napoleon in the office and then kip back at the house and he's got a plate of nachos on the counter with like shredded cheese that hasn't been melted and the shredded cheese pile changes every time it cuts and as a kid, I noticed that and just thought it was hilarious. And after all these years, it, to me, it seems like it's so intentionally done. I know there's a chance it's intentional. There's a chance it's not, but it does come off as really charming because of how silly the movie is. There's little things that you can pay attention to detail to. Like the actor who plays Uncle Rico for this movie was a vegetarian. And there are a ton of scenes in the movie that you can see him spit steak or hide it because for some reason they wanted his character to eat steak throughout the entire movie and he did it he just wouldn't swallow it and I find it hilarious that there's little things like that in the movie as well and the editing overall is pretty solid for a movie that has virtually no budget and it's just a movie that is really easy to immerse yourself into the world I feel like something like this now if someone came up with the concept for this it would probably be turned into like a Netflix TV show because I feel like with these characters there are so many random plot arcs you could create for them and really just dive into this small town more than you did in this hour and 30 minute movie and really just get to know more about the characters and about the world. I feel like that's probably what it would have been turned into in the modern era, but I'm so glad that this exists. I think that it's really a passion project from someone who wanted to create a unique comedy that's offbeat and strange, succeeded in it, the movie cost $400,000 to make and it ended up making like 45, 50 million in the box office, which is just absolutely absurd that a movie like this succeeded to the level that it did. And I know there were talks about sequels for a while. John Heater was actually approached about doing a sequel for this movie, but they were not gonna have Jared Hess direct it. So he said he would not work on it unless Jared Hess was the one at the directorial helm. And that's upsetting because I feel like something like this, a sequel all these years, later would have probably worked really well i think there's a way to approach it and do it in a way that people would have really appreciated and enjoyed it and i'm surprised that it never happened or that they didn't want jared hess to work on it but going back and re-watching this movie all these years later it's still really funny it's still really well put together and if you've never seen it before go watch it it's really different and it's very charming and i think you'll have a good time with it so if you see napoleon dynamite do you love it do you hate it leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think i love this movie so much i think it is just so much fun there's so much attention to detail and the dialogue delivery and just the characters and the way they interact that it's really impressive even all these years later as always if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for i'm always putting out new material and look forward to getting more out for you in the near future and as always everyone thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day